Hello. 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 And welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do um, something a little bit different. As many of you know, I do have a, an active Patreon campaign right now that has been running since February. Patreon is a membership-based business. There are like a series of different tiers. You can pledge to support your favorite artists. I have five tiers in mind. The first level, which is a dollar, um, there's a five dollar tier, ten dollar tier, twenty five dollar tier, um, uh, fifty dollar tier, and then a hundred dollar tier. One of the perks of being part of the hundred dollar tier, which is called the Bo Pan tier, you, or whoever is pledging the hundred dollars, can ask me any ten questions that you've always wanted to know. So this video is technically sponsored by uh, Trav, and I'll insert his uh, socials right here. He, um, Tremendously supportive, uh, active in my community. He was gracious enough to send me 10 questions that I can answer here in this video. Here are the 10 questions. Again, thank you very much, Trav, for taking the time to come up with these questions. And here, here we go. What is your favorite possession, excluding Sarge? Probably my guitars, um, especially my BC Rich Assassin. It's my favorite guitar that I own. Okay, come on. Come up, you're just gonna keep bothering me, so go. Did you pee? Your little wiener is wet. Ugh. <laughs> uh, number two. If you had full creative control to write an episode of The X-Files, what would happen? What an excellent question. If I had absolute creative control to write an episode, of course, it would be a monster of the week. Um, it would be dealing with something. I really, really liked like haunting episodes when you can't see what's actually happening and then you kind of create more of it in your head. I was also a really big fan of, of the episodes that were written by William Gibson, even if I don't like William Gibson as an author. I loved those episodes. There were two of them that he did. So I would kind of maybe mix the two there, something like kind of ghost haunting like, but then also have these science fiction elements um, and, and kind of like a black mirror thing, technology gone wrong. A combination of all, of all the things that I love about the standalone um, episodes and mixing in my favorite themes. Number three, what advice would you go back and give pre Kitty Fallon? Pre Kitty Fallon would have been like 11 and 12. One of my, I think the most important advice that I would give any young girl at that time is to trust your instincts as well as surround yourself with people that keep you grounded. If you're a child actor or anybody that's involved in the entertainment industry, you'll be surrounded by a lot of people that won't tell you how it is. And I think that it's super important to have people around you who ground you and don't cater or aren't sucked up into the world that you've been launched into if you are launched into a, a, you know, a success, a, you know, success in, within the entertainment industry. So I would tell her, you know, make sure that you, and I thankfully I did for the most part, I had a lot of people around me um, who kept me grounded and who, you know, kept me from, perhaps entering into a dangerous lifestyle or whatever. I, my, my parents were tremendously supportive and, and whatnot, so I was for the most part surrounded by those kinds of people, but I would definitely um, say to little Fallon, like, you know, make sure you keep that up for your entire life. Um, even, you know, post when things fall apart um, and things do fall apart, that's life, it's part of life. Um, and you know, and without having that grounding, that, that proper grounding, I think um, could have ended really badly for me to be perfectly honest. Number four, if you had unlimited funds, what would your ideal concert look like? Or, ooh, I would have an Android, an Android and human band. And all of them are gonna look like Connor from Detroit Become Human. So you're, have, you're gonna have an Android and human band, a mix. I'm a really big fan of also immersive uh, concert experiences. So for example, you know, you're not just sitting in a, in, a, in a seat watching a performance happen. You're watching or you're participating in what is happening. I think that would be so cool to translate that over into music. Like if you, if I have a band with a bunch of androids, maybe I have like a clone who looks like me, who's maybe playing a different song downstairs and provides like a different 
perspective or a different song or a different interpretation of a song that I've already done or whatever. So it's like a full Fallon experience. <laughs> I don't know. It would be really, really cool because I, I love that idea that you as a participant, you as a, as a viewer are able to contribute to the story in some way or contribute to the concert in some way. Um, I, I love that idea. I think that would be amazing. And if I had the money to do that, if, our, if I had the sponsors or the or whatever, 100% I would put on something like that kind of concert. I'm sure it exists somewhere and someone's done it. Um, but sorry, babes. But uh, yeah. Question five. If you wrote an autobiography, what would you title it? <sighs> That's a very good question. It wouldn't be something cat related, obviously, because I, I remember I used to cringe so badly when people would write um, articles about us as a band, like when I was in Kitty, and they would write like, Cat Scratch Fever was like the number one article name uh, like article headline that they would give like ooh cat scratch feeder girl scratch back or something and I'm just like oh I hate that maybe black cherry chronicles I don't know it would have been my stripper name if I became one I should probably start thinking about it question six what are some of the different ways you might do to help write and better your new AA album it's a very good question too funny because I was having kind of a similar conversation about a band that's been together for you know 25 years or something like that 20 30 years how do you keep it fresh and how do you keep it so that you're satisfying your old fans or your fans that have been with you for 20 plus years and maybe gain new fans I don't expect I'm going to gain new fans I'm only making it for myself and for the people that I know will will buy it it, then that's enough for me and if that's going to be 10 people or 100 people that's perfectly acceptable I feel like the monetization of art is, is a hard thing sometimes to reconcile as an artist you you know the, the end goal being that I am making this in order to sell it I think takes away from the magic of the the, uh, the magic of the process However, that being said, I do need to eat. So I need to pay my rent and pay my bills and whatnot. So yes, I'm thinking about it um, a little bit more from a business perspective, I suppose, is what I'm trying to get towards. Now, what will help me write and better is, is to, I think, remember what made me love writing music in the first place. If music comes from that, from that place in you where you're just you're just letting it come out and not being like I am going to sit down and write a pop song so that it will get me this you know what I mean like so that it becomes very formulaic I feel like returning back to that place where you you know you're a little bit more attached to the process and attached to what made you love it in the first place all of the other stuff doesn't matter because the the real the authenticity of of that process and whatever product comes from that process uh, will lead to some sort of monetary gain I think um, if that's the end goal and yes somewhat of that is my end goal so I think remembering and keeping that in mind when I'm creating the record um, is important to remember so um, what made me love it in the first place what made me love creating music was it an outlet was it helping me deal with uh, the slings and arrows of every day right question seven what progressions do you see in yourself and your music as you write and record so progressions in the sense if you're meeting progressions in the sense of, of growth um, I think I'm a little bit less attached to and I think it is very easy to get kind of stuck into the whole first course verse thing um, I'm not afraid I think now to play around with that and you know do a chorus first or a verse here and like there's just song structure trying to experiment with new sounds and manipulations and, and more digital manipulations number eight would you rather be in love or be loved I would say I would rather be be loved <laughs> being in love is a very scary position to be in. Um, I am all about kind of being vulnerable in the right context. However, I feel like when you're in love, you're under the influence of 
you know, hormones and pheromones and all these things that you can't control. And I, I don't like that feeling where you feel you're at the mercy of somebody else or at the mercy of, of something that you can't see or control, if that makes sense. And maybe it's because I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> I don't like the feeling of being controlled by something like that, that I can't. Hi, baby. Hello. Look at your nasty cats now. Um, it's a feeling that I'm not really crazy about, you know? I'd rather be um, loved, I, I suppose. Hmm. But then the other side of that is, if you are being loved and you are not loving, then, ooh, I don't know if that's a really good, that's maybe not a good energy exchange there as well. Next question. Number nine, what random stranger has impacted you the most in your life? Uh, I, it's, I did a Q and or like a chatty video about this, kind of something similar to this a while back. And um, it, it's interesting because like I, I have met a few different people in my life that have just randomly met and maybe not necessarily impacted me like profoundly but you know you're just like wow it makes you step back and realize there are good people random strangers who don't have bad intentions because generally if a random stranger talks to me on the fucking streetcar or on you know any public transit whatsoever i'm like you're crazy there's something weird with you i don't know what it is i don't want to stick around and find out there have been some people that I've met in my life where I'm like, wow, okay, you're not you're not weird um, and you don't want anything from me. Um, you just wanna talk. You, you just wanna say hello or you just wanna share you know, an experience. And I, usually that happens when you're on public transit, whether it be on an airplane or a train or whatever. That's happened to me a couple of times where you know I was stuck on a streetcar trying to get to an audition, which I missed because of the streetcar in Toronto. Standing beside an old man, and the old man saw my had like a a bag um, that had something in Danish written on the bottom. He was just like, "Oh, you know, are you from Denmark?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> he was talking about how he used to live in Copenhagen for like 22 years, and you're talking about that, and like totally random. I would not have known that information, obviously, otherwise. But he was talking about how much he misses it. He's only um, he moved back about 15 years ago to Canada. Um, he was married and they broke up, and so he moved back to Canada. Anyway, so he was telling me his basically his whole life story. Um, but it was such a nice, like you know, he was like it was like living living there in the 70s. It was it was uh, sorry, it wasn't the 70s, but the whole uh, Living there for most of the 90s in most of the 20, uh, sorry, the 2000s. Just talking about how we both love uh, the city and, and all that and it was just, it was just like a really nice conversation. And, and by the time we, uh, the, the streetcar got moving and I'm like, well, I missed my audition. So I guess I'm just gonna whatever. And he bid me farewell and he said, you know, have a whatever. And he didn't ask anything like, hey, you know, let's go out for coffee or whatever. And I'm like, obviously, it, it didn't seem like it was like he was trying to pick me up. He just wanted, he just saw something that triggered something in him where he wanted to talk to me and we were stuck in the streetcar, so he felt the need. Anyway, so no, he didn't profoundly affect me in that moment, but it just made me think in general that, uh, sorry, it just made me think that there are people in this world that are not um, out to, to get me or to do something bad to me. There are some people that are decent and that is really refreshing because a lot of people are fucking shitty, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the very last question for the Trav q and I call him Trav, his name is Travis, but the last question here, number 10, what is the most spontaneous, uh, spont wow. What is the most spontaneous, impulsive thing you have ever Done. I would say, um, oh, I'm trying to think. I'm waiting! The one time I did surprise, the only reason why this is coming into my head is because I told this story yesterday to a friend of mine. Um, I've gone and flown to a place and visited a friend without telling them that I was coming. Um, obviously I didn't, you know, I didn't want to intrude as much as possible, but I didn't want to see said person. And I stood outside 
um, around my hotel and because I got a hotel for the time I was there. And I called my friend and I said, hey. And he didn't realize who it was. He was just like, uh, who is this? And so then I was just like, can you take a wild guess? And then I talked a little bit more. He's like, is this, is this valid? I'm like, yes it is. He's like, oh, hi, how's it going? Whatever. And I'm busy yapping to him about um, whatever as, as if we, as we normally do when we talk on the phone. And uh, he's just like, so why are you calling me? Like, because at the time it would have been like nine o'clock in the morning my time, right? So he was wondering why I was calling. And I'm like, oh, well, uh, I'm in your city. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm in your city. So I think it was probably the most spontaneous thing I'd ever done because I hadn't planned beforehand to go see him specifically. Um, but I did, was like, you know what? I think it would be really cool if I just jump on the bus and take the trip from Denmark to go see him without telling him. So, and I decided that in like two days and I, I booked my ticket and I went and it was, it was hilarious. He was, he was so, he couldn't believe it. He was like, I don't understand why you're here and sitting here right in front of me. And I'm like, because I'm crazy and I do sometimes do spontaneous things. I think it's probably the one of the, the most PG spontaneous things I can tell you um, here on YouTube. It was a very spontaneous uh, thing, but not necessarily impulsive. So. I have done spontaneous impulsive things, but it's definitely not safe for this channel. <laughs> so that concludes the uh, personalized Q&A. Thank you so much, Trav, for sending me in those 10 questions. If you're interested in learning more about my Patreon campaign, I'll leave all the links in the description down below so that you can take a look at that. So again, thank you so much, Trav, for sponsoring this video. <laughs> thank you very, very, very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. I would love for you to have a lovely day, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.